have the ability to, to generate metabolic energy at the same rate as the most um, as the most active vertebrates do, hummingbirds and shrews, which are known to have the highest metabolisms. Bees have that kind of capability. Okay, but to do this, they have this is kind of a neat thermal uh, uh, image taken out of uh, taken out of the article, and uh, I had to look at it a bit before I could see it. But this is this is an FLIR camera, and uh, you see the outline of the bee here, and here in the middle of the thorax of these two bees, you see this this hot image. This is about 94 degrees. Um, those are heater bees. They're actively generating heat in a hive, and you can see how much warmer their thorax is compared to the rest of their body. So they're able to, when they want to, to generate quite a bit of heat. So how does the cluster itself work, and how does it go about keeping the whole, cluster, the whole group of bees warm? Well, first of all, a cluster, a ball of bees, is a relatively <coughs> efficient thermal machine. You wouldn't think it would be, but it, but it really is incredible. A six-pound cluster, something that's a little over two kilos, um, is going to use about the same energy as a 25-watt light bulb. So a relatively small amount of energy is needed to heat a relatively large biomass. Uh, I, it was compared in this article to some of the best cold-adapted vertebrates. If any of you vertebrates, any of you know what an Arctic ptarmigan is? It's a little white bird with fur on its feet, or fur, feathers on its feet. Um, it's able to survive in Arctic and subarctic conditions all winter long. It has about the same thermal efficiency as a cluster of bees, so they're incredibly efficient. Their metabolism of bees varies greatly uh, given the temperature. Um, this graph is, uh, is uh, a summary of quite a few different studies, but what it tells us is, is that along this axis is increasing amount of energy being used, and along this axis is increasing temperature. And so what the graph is actually showing is how the metabolism of a group of bees changes over, um, over the changing temperatures. And you'll see that their maximum metabolic efficiency is right about here in the graph, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. At 40 degrees Fahrenheit, they are able to use the minimum amount of food to produce the maximum amount of energy. And that efficiency changes as the temperature goes up, they start using more and more food, and then it starts to drop off as temperature starts approaching the temperature of the brood nest. Same thing as it gets much, much colder, um, you see that the bees have to use quite a bit more energy to maintain body temperature. If you read about some of the people that are doing um, warehousing of bees in the Dakotas and so on, they have cold storage buildings to protect their bees in the wintertime, those buildings are held at about this temperature. That means that the bees can survive using the minimum amount of food stores necessary for the winter. So, how does the cluster work? Why is it such a miraculous thing? As we know, so many things about bees are miraculous. <laughs> the cluster is one of those neat things. The cluster, it helps to think of it sort of like a, sort of like a, 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 a ball that has shells. It's, uh, this cluster is like an onion, uh, to, to quote uh, Shrek. Um, on the outside of this ball is what's called the insulating shell of bees. And this is a layer of very tightly packed workers. It's, it's anywhere from one to three inches thick, depending on the size. A good sized cluster will be about the size of a volleyball, maybe a little bit smaller, depending on the number of bees in the hive. But the bees in this outer shell are all facing inward. So if you, if you looked at a cluster just hanging in space, all you'd be seeing are bee butts. Because everybody would be head down toward the center of that cluster. Why is that important? It's important.